Beth, I have been in this kitchen all day long. Um, I made the peach cobbler, and it's all done. It's behind me on my way. You'll see it in a little bit, and I'll have the video up for it um, when it'll be tomorrow. <laughs> you'll get to see how I made it. But you'll get to see well, my husband will be eating it because I can't eat a lot at a time. You all know I've had gastric sleeve surgery, so I get about three bites, four bites, and then I have to wait for like three or four hours. And Lord, it's hot in my kitchen. Forgive me for having to sit down. Sometimes I have two bulging discs in my back. And uh, so a lot of times I'm in a chair. I just scoot around and do what I can in the kitchen. What I'm going to teach you today tonight, I'm nervous as the cat in a room full of rockers. Um, <laughs> Rosie got me brave, to be honest. And if you don't know Rosie O'Kelly, hi, everybody. I'm going to try to read this chat. Hi, Candy. Hi, Steve. I guess who? <laughs> and I'm going to try to be good and read the chat and uh, manage to do all this at the same time. If I screw up, y'all forgive me. If we burn it, we'll just give it to the dogs and go Burger King. But uh, one way or another, we're going to feed feed somebody in this house. Uh, we're doing whiskey, whiskey kissed uh, filet, back and wrap filet mignon. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And then I'm going to have caramelized onions and mushrooms sauteed in the roux that's left. It's really easy. Then I remove that. And then you'll see me make uh, asparagus. And the way I make asparagus, it's really, really easy. But the first thing I'm going to start out with, you know, you always have to have your times going, you know, so everything kind of ends at the same time, is I'm going to make you homemade biscuits. Now, everybody overseas, let's see, I see all sorts of people. Hi, Stewie, you go behave, doll baby. Um, <laughs> I got those memory foam pads and they help me. You know what? I got to do something. My back's killing me. They're wanting to do all sorts of stuff to me and I don't want to cut on. I don't want any more stuff to happen. Enough has happened <laughs> for right now. I got to take a break on it. But anyway, um, hi Steph. Hi doll baby. Um, anyway, what I'm going to do is the homemade biscuits. Everybody in the UK and, you know, all my Aussie friends, they're always like, what's biscuits? Because what we call cookies, they call biscuits. Well, our biscuits are, it's really hard to explain because it's not exactly like our soda bread. I, our biscuits are Southern biscuits. So I'm going to show you how to make them and how to make them right. And uh, I spent pretty much a whole summer with my Dee, Y'all know my maternal grandmother. Because she makes the best biscuits in the world. I mean, everybody bragged on and she made them literally every day so she perfected how she did it um so let's see if i can do this and not screw it up i'm going to give you the recipe first and that way you can write it down if you have any questions you can always email me later hi gypsy i'm so glad you made it because gypsy i have to say gypsy had she was like what's a biscuit i said i'm gonna make a video and make biscuits so gypsy can learn and um hopefully she'll try it at home and she'll enjoy them as much as we do you know because they're not just for breakfast they're for all day long <laughs> let's see who else right around hey girl denise lynn hello welcome 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 uh right around hi i know everybody's cooking today and I, it's it's hot and humid, but I've been in this kitchen and I've been happier than I've been in a long time. I haven't been able to do a lot of cooking lately. Uh, you all know, you've heard all the crap that I've been through. And this is my hobby. This is my happy space. Um, that's why I do my videos from my kitchen. And so hopefully you all will enjoy it like I do. Now, here's the recipe for biscuits. It's real easy. There's literally four ingredients for biscuits. Anybody that tells you, well, let me see. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four ingredients. Anybody that tells you you need more crap in your biscuits is telling you a big old lie. Now, you don't even need to really use a rolling pin, but I do. And the reason I do, so I'm going to do this and knocking everything over. I got it all arranged. This is my rolling pin. It was carved by my great grandfather, my great grandmother, when they got married in 1908, I think. And anyway, I have used this since I was a little girl and uh, I asked my granny, I said, can I have that rolling pin? You know, cause she doesn't cook anymore. She's almost 98. And she said, you most certainly can. And she gave it to me. And the way we treat our rolling pins is because everything we roll out has an oil in it. They don't need to be in soap and water. Kind of like a good uh, cast iron skillet. Scrape it off. If y'all were watching Rosie make pot pots, did you see how she scraped it off and wiped it off and put it up? That way it seasons that wood and you don't have so much trouble sticking. Then let me set that down there. And I have a, 
I have a homemade uh, cut board that basically it, or it, it's just, it's not fancy. I don't need a fancy anything to roll out my biscuits on. You see, it's just a big old piece of wood. And you're going to see my butter in my bowls. Four biscuits, you are going to need half, you know, see my funny hand here. Um, you're going to need half a stick of butter and cut it up. It needs to be cold. You want to make sure it's good and cold. Uh, I cut this in half because you need half a stick and then the other half is melted and you want to put salt in it. And I put uh, about a tablespoon of salt in this because this is what we're going to brush the top of the biscuits with when they're good and cut. All right. And I'm talking fast because I'm nervous. Now, you need self-rising flour. There is no sense in getting regular flour and have to worry about baking powder and all that nonsense. Self-rising flour is fine. You're gonna need salt, but um, okay. Wait a minute. Let me, I'm having trouble. Let me fix this. Hi, Duchess. I'm gonna, here we go, Steve. Well, if I can hit it right. There you go. All right, I wanna make sure uh, that I say hello to everybody. If I miss anybody, just keep hollering. <laughs> you know what, I hope you're hungry. It's I can smell everything in between the peach cobbler earlier. It's delicious in there. Now, you're gonna need two cups of self-rising flour, like I said, you've got your butter, and then you're gonna need two thirds to three fourths a cup of cold milk. And I've got this written down on my phone because I had to send it to my daughter so she can make this. <laughs> but I don't like, to make my biscuits with regular milk. They just don't taste right. So I have, uh, actually it's a low fat buttermilk. Now I use a low fat buttermilk because my biscuits have a lot of butter. But it's not a lot, it's just right. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, let's see if I can do this without knocking everything off. I'm gonna take my butter. I've cut it into pats because it's cold. You're gonna take the pastry, pastry cutter and just work that in. And what you want to do, you know, my DD used to tell me, she said, uh, you don't want to overwork biscuits. The less you do to them, the better they are. They'll be lighter and fluffier. And what I'm doing, as I'm in here, I'm cutting this butter up. You see it's hanging on? I'm cutting it up into the flour. And you want it to end up to be about a good pea size or maybe just a little bit bigger. You do not want the butter to disappear you know and some people use shortening now if you like shortening you know like a lot of vegetarians they want to use shortening vegans vegetarians i get it all mixed up but if you don't want real butter you can use shortening uh actually when they came out with butter flavored crisco i used to use that a lot uh but now i have a thing i think every cook has a kitchen fetish and my husband's he doesn't go on camera. You'll hear him from time to time. He'll speak up. But he'll tell you that I have an issue with butter because I'm always, I don't, I don't know why. I always want to have about four boxes and there's four sticks. So I want about four boxes in the refrigerator. If it gets lower than that, I start panicking. And we always have to have milk. You know, all the things that growing up, I could make sure that I had a meal for the family. All right. Now. I've got it cut up. Let me pick up a piece. See my butter? It's cut like that. That's a bigger piece. I'm gonna cut it in half. But as I'm looking through here, I can still see the butter. Now I'm gonna add my buttermilk. It depends on your flour and it depends on the humidity if you put more or less milk or buttermilk in. Now uh, I'm gonna start out with two thirds of a cup. There's my cup, y'all. Y'all forgive me, I'm sure I have a third cup measuring, measuring cup in there, in the drawer. I've probably got three or four of them, but I'm gonna guesstimate here because I'm kind of used to doing those. All right, so I've got about two thirds. I'm gonna put the lid back on that so I don't end up with buttermilk all over my cooktop room. I'll be so glad when I get the one that matches everything else. It's sitting there, I've gotta get the cabinets done first. You know what, I've got probably about three, let's see, yeah, i got a little more than two-thirds. That's fine, though. You can go up to, you know, like three-fourths. I'm going to add this in slowly. Now, I've got my oven preheated to 425. Before ovens got really good, honestly, and I'm just going to swirl this with the pastry cutter. That way I can see. 
Um, before ovens got really good, my DD always would start biscuits in a cold oven. And you've probably heard that from, from older people, always start it in a cold oven. I haven't tried that with this one, with my old, sorry, I'm banging. Um, with my old oven, that's what I always did. But once again, this is a new one. And from what I've seen, it's, it's doing pretty good. So we're going to give that a shot. I'll add the rest of this buttermilk in. You want your biscuit dough to hang together. I'm going to have to get my hands in it. If you're making biscuits, have clean hands. Be prepared to take your jewelry off. And you just work that dough. And it's going to get up underneath my nails. But I always keep my dishwater, good soapy dishwater, with a little bit of bleach. Because bleach kills germs. A little bit of bleach over there. And I will be fine dandy once this is done. Okay, so it's hanging together. Now, you see, see how it is? It's not real wet. That's what you, that's what you want. You want to hang together. Now, I'm gonna need just a little bit more. I may have gotten a little more flour in there than I thought. And we'll add just a touch at a time. And you want, you want everything at room temperature except for your butter, because you're cutting it up. So you see, I'm just working this dough. I right, see. So read the chat while I'm doing this. Gypsy, you're <laughs> a cup is eight ounces. And I don't know what, honey, what's the metric version of eight ounces? Google it. <laughs> that's how much you put. A cu our cups are eight ounces, and that's about how much buttermilk I've got. And remember, I put two cups, two cups of flour, self-rising flour. And there are conversions on Google. If you don't have self-rising flour, you've only got all-purpose flour. This is going to need a little bit more. For some reason, this is working dry. And Rosie, I have to say, I admire you so much. You saved that, that pastry dough, the uh, pie crust, so well last night. I was really impressed. That's what made me brave enough to do that. If you, I'm sure everybody knows who Rosie is. Go to Rosie O'Kelly's channel and watch her make chicken pot pie last night. It was delicious looking and actually my husband is convinced now see I'm just working it in you have to look at it to do it. it's 150 grams liquid <laughs> I don't know I don't know metric y'all have to work it out somebody that does the math he looked it up he's good at really good at math okay is this starting to stick together real good now the as I go around the sides of the balls see how the sides of the balls get clean that's what you want and like I say, you just want to be real gentle with it. The more you do to it, the worse it'll turn out. It's sticking good. And I do not have. Okay, that's good. You don't want it. How do I explain it? You don't want your dough to look smooth. See how that looks? It's a little rough, like crumbly. Not crumbly. I don't want to say crumbly. It hangs together, but it's not overworked. And I'm just going to push it like that. Okay. Let me get some of this out of the way. Woo, I got dough all over my fingers. It's all right, it'll come off in just a minute. All right, give me a second. Baby, will you take this? He's gonna be my, <laughs> my helper on this today. Uh, he didn't volunteer, I volunteered him, so. <laughs> all right. Oh, you're so sweet, Steph. You know what, if you make these, I guarantee everybody's gonna get, be like, I don't know what they are, but please make them again. <laughs> That's what always happens. Now, this batch is just enough for two people. There's only two people here and two dogs that eat all our leftovers if we let them. All right, there we go. So I didn't want a big batch. I have made big batches, it doesn't matter. Let's put a little flour on the board. What y'all say? If I can keep from burning everything and, uh, Having it all go to shit, I'll be really, really happy. I will be very impressed with myself. I will probably be so giddy I don't sleep. Okay. Got a little flour on the board. I'm going to turn the dough out. Everybody see that good? See what it looks like? Look how pretty that is. It's just right. All right. Put my bowl over here. Now, with this, I'm going to take a little bit of my flour, just pat it on my hand. And just run it over. I don't want. I don't want this dough to get dry. That's the last thing you want. Now I'm gonna put this in a pie pan, in this uh, 
cake around. Excuse me, I almost said pop in. You can use pop in. But I'm going to use this. It works just as well as a baked sheet. And I like it better, honestly, because they're a little bit, um, they're not quite as crisp, I guess is the word. If you want a crispier biscuit, you put them a little apart. See how I'm just using it from the dough and right on there just a little at a time. You do not want dry biscuits. Okay. They don't turn out looking like pie crust, and they're not going to turn out. Oh, that's bad. You don't have to flip them over either. That's a secret. Well, I don't guess it's a secret anymore. I've just told the whole world on the internet. If you want them good, you don't keep turning them. You don't work this dough. This is not something that you want to spend a lot of time playing with. You know, I talk about Madeline used to play with my daughter used to play with the dough when I made biscuits because they're fast. You saw how fast I threw this together. Um, I just, what, after I cut them, I'd give her a little leftover. She'd play with it. You want to know something funny? One of the reasons that I always did that is she'd play with it. She'd drop it in the floor. She'd throw it around and I would bake it with the rest and then she'd make her daddy eat it. <laughs> that off. You see why we're divorced. But, um, Okay, this is my Dee Dee's Biscuit Cutter. I got this uh, after she passed away, but I, once again, something that I used all my life. I'm going to touch it in the flour, just scrape around like that. Nothing fancy. And just cut me out some biscuits. And it's going to look just like that. And I'd say that's about, would you say it's about three quarters of an inch to an inch thick. And it's cut mm, two and a half, three inches across. And I'm just going to put them in. You do not want your biscuits to touch the side of the pan. Okay. Now, one of the thing about one of the things that I love about these is if you make more than you need, put them in a Ziploc bag, throw it in the microwave. Uh, I leave. I don't have a bread like container like for loaves of bread and stuff like that. Put it in a ziplock, fill it in the microwave. It's fine. I've done that. I've done that my entire life. My mom did it, and my yeah, both grandmothers did it. My one grandmother went and get a microwave for my granny. She was like, I don't need a microwave. And I swear all she ever used it for, she's kind of afraid of it. All things she ever used it for was to heat up her water for coffee or heat the coffee up. Okay. You want them spread a little bit away from the side. You don't want it at the side. And I want mine... Look at how I'm putting them together. See how they're just almost together? That's why you get a good one. Um, if you live in the U.S., you probably know that Hardy's makes the best biscuits. I guarantee you will you'll be like, mm -mm, I'm making my own biscuits. The only time we make a biscuit run is on the weekends. And we do that because I'm lazy. And I haven't felt well. And it's easier. Used to make a run, but when I want to say I love you, <laughs> we do homemade biscuits. Now, just pick up your pieces like this. Put them here to the side. I'm going to run this together. Notice I'm not even using the rolling pin, and I'm not flipping them over either. Okay? I'm just kind of putting them together. And they don't have to be perfect. You don't, you don't want them to look like they're canned biscuits. That's the whole thing. You know? Anybody can make canned biscuits. All right? So this is something special. It doesn't take very long. There we go. Because they're a little, a little moist. And that's good. And we've got them in there. And I've got enough for one more biscuit. And I don't think I have room for it. But we'll try. I'm just going to roll that around. This is what I would give my daughter. And she called it a pud. I don't know why, but it was her pud. <laughs> And it was sweet. So I'm just going to make that into a little pud there. I promise not to drop it the floor or get dog hair on it or anything like that and make somebody eat it. <laughs> that would be awful, wouldn't it? Oh, Lordy. Let me check the chat while I'm finishing this one. Church's Chicken Honey Biscuits. Honey, if you make these and you brush the top with honey, you got the same thing. Guaranteed. Okay, I'm going to rearrange these just a little bit. See if I can get the pud in there. Okay, now, because the biscuit in the middle is touching that side of the bread, which is what this is, it's a simple bread, it'll be nice and soft. So we're gonna have the other sides that are gonna be a little browner. 
you're going to put this in for 425 in a 425 degree oven. That's Fahrenheit for everybody that does Celsius. And um, on here, I have written down the time. And I usually do it for about 10 minutes. And wait a minute, what did I write down? Because I did test this out. Oh, Lordy. Uh, 10 to 14 minutes or until they're like golden brown. Now, mine never... Dee Dee always would turn it on broil. She'd brush the top with the butter and salt, and then she'd turn the broil on for just a spin after they cooked long enough. But I think she cooked hers a little at a little lower temperature than this. But like I said, I've been trying this out to make sure that it works with my oven pretty pretty well. But we will see. <laughs> All right, let me get let me get my rag. Y'all always need a dish rag, right? Then we come to the good stuff. All right, I'm gonna pop this in the oven. Honey, will you set time? And I'm just gonna put it in on the top rack. My top rack is very low on this. And we'll put it in there. We'll start with 10 minutes. Give me your phone. <laughs> hey Siri, <laughs> set a timer for 10 minutes. Okay. That's the greatest thing ever invented. Okay, hey Rainbow. Let's see who all's in here. Hello, sweet man. Um, oh, Rosie. Hey, honey. Oh, what are we talking about? No, it'll always be able to be pulled apart. I missed it. Yeah, they're kind. Of, yeah, they're a lot like scones, except for scones are a little more refined. But yeah, they're real easy to make. Okay, now I'm gonna get rid of all this. So I can do the other stuff. Now I've got my butter. It's sitting here waiting. I'm just going to set it over here. Get my flour. I have the best husband. <laughs> He's a good helper. He's like, I just want to eat. Lord, I've got this all over my face. If I end up looking like a crazy person with flour everywhere and then everything else, I'm going to go, yeah, she really is nuts. <laughs> all right. I'm going to put that over there. Honey, if you'll take my cutting board. Just come on, no, come on around here. You can knock everything off. I have got everything arranged over here, and I'm terrified it's all going to go flying and into the floor. I tried to think it. I'm going to wash my hands real quick. Y'all talk amongst yourselves. All right. One thing about having acrylic nails, you do get bread and stuff underneath it. Now, if I'm making meatloaf or anything, I always put gloves on. Okie dokie. Let me dry my hands. Get another towel. Well, I've got washcloths, and I have all these old towels. I save. Y'all know I save everything. Um, if it's still useful, I still get all of it. But I don't like dirty dishcloths. So I'm going to dry my hands real good. And I'm going to be up and down for this. Let me see if I can get this down. Yeah. All right. We're going to start out with my skillet. Now, once again, everything's at room temperature. Okay. Before I get started, honey, hand me the fillets right there. Everything, you want to set your meat out at room temperature. Um, these are six ounce fillets. They are, I'd say an inch and a half to two inches, probably two inches thick. So when you go to a restaurant, if you want a filet mignon, and a lot of times they're bacon wrapped, and you want it done over medium, then uh, they're going to butterfly. Butterfly is when you cut it in half and then you lay it out. So it looks like you've got basically two steaks that are connected. In the middle. These are wet aged. I don't know if I should go into the whole aging process, but my, um, like I said, raised on a farm. Both grandparents had farms. So um, I got used to eating non aged beef, if that makes any sense. Let me put this up a little bit. I got used to eating, you know, when they would kill beef, it would go straight to the butcher shop. It would get wrapped up and it would go in the freezer and like when you kill the hog sausage got canned and things like that but 
meat did not get aged at all on the farm because, you know, the temperature control, you can lose meat and all this. And they just put it in the deep freeze. Well, they usually had a deep freeze in a stand and freeze. I think both of them, both my grandparents did. And I know we had two deep freezes at our house plus the refrigerator and all that. And uh, so I had to learn about aging meat. And the way I did it was, you know, working in restaurants and figuring out, wait a minute, why does this steak taste different than it does at mom and dad's? Well, this is wet aged. Basically, you take a piece of beef, you don't dry it out, you just wrap it up and uh, they have it sealed plastic and you throw it in the bottom of your fridge if you want to age your own beef. When I found that out, oh my gosh, things got all sorts of different. We had some accidents. We had some that didn't turn out well, but there's dry aging as well. Um, when you see the beef hanging, and it's staying there for a while. It's like 60 days for that, I believe. I think 60 to maybe a little bit more, it depends. I'm not an expert on aging beef. I'm not gonna lie about that, but it's 28 days for uh, to wet age. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna caramelize these onions. And I just cut these in slices. They're just in rings, you know, just to be pretty. Caramelizing them brings out the sugar in them, you know, it gets nice and brown. I haven't put anything in there yet. Um, baby, will you grab me? Did I bring that butter? <laughs> there's a little, believe it or not, there's another. There it is. I knew I had it somewhere. I'm going to put a half stick of butter in there because there is no oil in there right now. Now, if I wanted to caramelize the onions after I cooked the beef, that'd be a different story. All right? Because I'd have the fat from that. But we're making a roux and we're going to add liquor to it, which is fun because I don't even drink, but it burns off most of the alcohol, but it gives a great flavor. And I'll have to sing my song when I put the whiskey in. <laughs> All right, let's start warming this up. Once again, I put it on real low. It's like between one and two. This, this cooktop gets a little crazy. Wants to do its own thing. So I have to watch it. I'm gonna put that in. Let me cut that up a little bit. And that's going to go in. I don't want a lot of oil. You know, I, I want these to have a pretty little brown to them, but I'm going to add the rest of this stuff so it'll have enough liquid in it. But does anybody have any questions so far? Rainbow, I'm so glad you came by. God love you. And I'm, you know, I'm so sorry about your baby. Her, she, she lost a food bag. Uh, for a baby, she lost her yeah yesterday, day before yesterday. But anyway, um, she's got my heart, and she needs to rest. Uh, okay, so we got this started, and you can hear it. The onions will start popping just a little bit. All right, now I guess I need to sing the song, Donna. Oh, whiskey, if you were a woman, I'd drive you from his cheating heart for sure. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take this whiskey. And I don't ever measure it because I never know how many, on how <laughs> many onions I'm going to have. It depends on how big the onion is, to be honest. I just make it into nice, nice little rings. And I am just going to. Make sure a little bit more. Oh, that smells good. I miss, I miss being able to have have a Jack and Coke or a Jim and Coke or ginger, bourbon and branch. All right. So I'm going to turn this up just a little bit because that butter needs to melt. Because, of course, when you're doing something, the butter's not going to. A watch pot never boils. You'll hear me tell about that. Well, no, I don't think I do in that video and the one for tomorrow with the peach cobbler. Anyway, okay, so you got butter and whiskey. Now, we're going to get, uh, I don't have any fresh garlic, which I'm irritated because I didn't pick any up. Garlic powder works just fine. What you want to do? Sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. That's it. Salt. Now, I'm not going to, usually I would add pepper, but I've got, um, the bacon that's around these fillets is pepper bacon. So you really don't need any. Look at this. This is what you call. Don't measure. Just watch. 
and you just put a light coat. Use as much as you like. If you like things salty, great. If you don't, fine. All right. I'm going to use my slotted spoon because I want the liquid to stay there. I don't want to be pulling up liquid. And can y'all see? Everybody say, oh my gosh. <laughs> Yay. All right, start to heat. Now, you all know that I'm I'm one of those people that if you go, if you get Chinese food, I save all the soy packets and the duck sauce and all that stuff. They come in handy. <laughs> and you say, I need soy sauce for this. I'm not going to go out and spend a bunch of money when I get this bread, right? Where are my scissors? I know about them. Oh. Oh, it's starting to simmer. All right, I'm just gonna cut a little bit. This is three packets. And you gotta kinda look, you'll see. Three packets of soy sauce. I've got more if I need it. I'm just gonna lay that there. Now, where's my spoon? How do I lose my spoon? There, my I did that all the time in the kitchen. You know, I have eight inches, Kate. Usually I'm pretty good in the kitchen, though. All right, this is starting to starting to warm up. I'll raise the temperature just a little bit. Biscuit should be ready. Being hands-free on a phone is absolutely fantastic. And it helps so much. I've got a bunch of messages. I can't answer messages on my phone when I'm doing this. I don't know how everybody else does it. God love you. Talent. Total talent. <laughs> but okay, so while this is caramelizing, and this is why I started the biscuits first. Because I have biscuits getting this started. Because they've got to cook a little bit, you know. We're gonna get a nice roux for that. And our steaks are going to be flavored absolutely fantastically. I have mushroom sliced mushrooms to go in here as well, but they're not going in just yet. All right. Biscuits look almost done. If your biscuits, when you look at them, look a little bit wet on top, they ain't done yet. Okay, so I'm gonna, because I've done this for a while. Hey Siri, set a timer for four minutes. I usually do it in between three and four minute increments. All right, cool beans. Looking good. Now, I sometimes put a lid on this to keep from losing the liquid, but I don't think with all these onions I'm going to do that. It's going to take a few minutes, though. So we're going to let this cook. Get it nice and warm. It's looking good. Y'all see it bubbling? Okay, let me see what's going on in the chat. Alicia, you don't know what I'm making. Oh, Rosie, honey, you come here. I'll make this for you. <laughs> and I'll get you to make me a, a devil's food cake. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that, but I was being silly. Um, oh, God, they are smelling good. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. What was I doing? I got distracted. Holy crap. Okay, let me read. What I'm making is called Whiskey Kissed Filet Bacon Wrap Filet Mignon. It's pepper bacon. That's around it, and uh, I have two six-inch fillets, as you can see here. They are wrapped. I, when I bought, when I bought them, they were already aged, of course, taken care of. It's it's much easier. I don't have to remember anything. And they also have these cool little tabs. Um, you know, a lot of people don't know when the center is going to be done. Hey, there are chefs in every restaurant that screw it up. I eat mine pretty rare. Be honest, just knock the horns off and wipe his butt, put it on a plate. I'll eat it. Uh, I love rare meat, but with this having bacon on it, I'm gonna show you a trick and uh, to make the bacon crisp and to still get your fillet cooked on the outside and either have a cool or a warm, or if you want to, you know, keep cooking it on a low temperature, you can get it up to you know, like even medium. I don't recommend medium well. And God, please don't want a steak by cooking it well. It gives me, a, it really hurts my heart. You know, <laughs> I, I think an angel loses its wings every time somebody asks for a good steak, a good cut of meat, and they want it well done. I was like, no, no, no. Because it cooks all the flavor out of it. You want your steak to be juicy and tasty. And if you want it done through, then, you know, medium well at most. Okay. Now, if you look at these, let me set that down. If you look at these, they're getting nice and limp, and they're starting to caramelize. Caramelize, just like caramel, that's bringing the, it, caramel is sugar and uh, butter. 
basically, and like vanilla flavoring. Last Christmas, how much caramel did I make? I got out to a caramel kick, and holy crap, I thought we were all going to lose teeth. We ate so much caramel. I sent some to my daughter, and she was like, I need some more of these. I'm like, do you know how long that takes? And um, and I screwed up a batch or two, but that's all right. You know, I'm, I wasn't a caramel expert. I am not a big candy maker. Um, I do baked things, and it's about pumpkin bread time. I'll be doing that. Okay, look how pretty those are. Oh, but anyway, caramel Eisen brings out the sugar so the onion, instead of, you know, having a little bite to it, it's kind of sweet and it's real flavorful. And um, now that this, this is a nice bowl, it's going to be pretty. Can you give me the mushrooms back? Thank you, love. All right. Got a nice bowl of sliced mushrooms. You can use, um, if you have big portobello mushrooms, slice them in strips. And put in there, it'd be just fine. These are just regular little old ordinary plain, you know, growing in the dark, growing in the manure world, growing in the dark, well washed and sliced. All right, I'm gonna put these in here. Oh, this gonna be so good. Are you hungry, baby? No. He's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Our biscuits should be getting done pretty soon, and I'm gonna show you how to. How I handle those. Here, honey. Will you put those two balls in the sink for me? There you go. Hey, I told you it'd be about ready. You get instincts when you've done this. So, all right. Turn the timer off. I'm going to move my steaks. And you see, I just kind of scoot around, and that way my back doesn't hurt. I want one of the rolling, like, stools or something, but I probably roll right off of it. I'll oh, kill myself. All right. These. I want to show them to you. Woo! See how they've risen? But because I haven't brushed them yet, they're not brown on top, so I'm going to take them out. And watching Rosie do her pot pie last night, I was like, crap, I can't find my basting brush. I'm telling you, when we moved to this house, I lost things in transit, and I still keep asking my beloved husband. I'm like, uh... Are you sure there's not a box in the basement with all my shit in? I can't find it. He's like, no, I swear I've looked and looked. Okay. What I'm doing, you can't see. Crap. All right. What I'm doing here is I'm just taking this salted butter and I'm just loving on them. I would say if you cook with love, you should be all right. Heart's gonna have to come visit me and I'm gonna make these for her. She doesn't like she's, she's like, I'll open a can of biscuits. I'll buy I'll buy the pot pie. I'm gonna make these for her. All right, you want a good amount, a generous amount. I like enough to where I don't have to put butter on my biscuits. Now, if I'm doing biscuits and gravy, I don't use as much butter. But I want them pretty. I don't want to make anything that's not pretty. Even when I do a pie, I know it sounds silly if I make a pie, I want to cut when I do the slots, I do it like in a little you know, starburst and all that. Okay, I'm going to pop these back in here. And I'm going to have to watch them real close. Hey, Siri. Set a timer for two minutes. And I probably have to take them out for them. All right. What we want, as you can see, my onions are getting nice and brown. And, oh, let me get this other spoon so you can see the liquid that's in here. Because between the soy sauce, I'm going to knock this all out. I have little Italian chefs everywhere. I collect all that stuff. There's always something to collect. This is what my roux looks like. And as you can see, it's nice just going over this. And, oh, it's going to be delicious. Let me set this over here. I actually have a thing to set my spoon in that I never use. <laughs> just keep stirring them. What's going on in the chat? Anything? Oh. Yeah, ours is a British ass. Do you know what? As many British friends as I have, UK, I don't know that front bum mean, meant your punani. I'd heard it, but I'm like, front bum, that, that, that makes no sense. Because I'm thinking bum like we use it, like somebody who's out of work and just, I'm like, what? And because I hadn't heard it all along, and I was like, ooh. <laughs> Okay. All right, look at that. Now I want my I don't like let me put this back up. 
Oh no, I just want to eat dinner. Honey, you just come on over. I swear y'all can come by. I look. Nobody leaves this house hungry, do they? You get handed a drink at the door, and are you hungry? <laughs> if I know you're coming, there's something to snack on before dinner. And then I usually cook entirely too much food and have to send it home with guests when they leave. You know, um, when when one or two servings will do, I'll make four. But uh, I just love to feed people, and you know, I don't want anybody. What are you doing over there, Brian? You're not getting up here. I'm cooking. Um. <laughs> You may need to entertain him. He's not happy. Okay. There goes our biscuits. Let's see. Okay. And it's steaming. It's not quite brown yet, though. The biscuits are done. All right. You know what? I'm going to do Dee Dee's trick. Hit that broil for a second. And then we should be fine. All right. I don't like... I don't like raw mushrooms. I just don't. The texture bothers me. Oh, these these onions look so good. Oh my god, my stomach is like growling. I can feel it just clenching up because I'm hungry, and I ate lunch. Oh, that's gonna be so good. All right, let me peek. I do not want them to get too done. I don't like dark biscuits. <laughs> that sounds crazy, but I don't. My husband does. Um, I found that out that he will eat burnt stuff. <laughs> he likes anything that's burnt. And I'm like, because I don't at all. And I made, what was it, bratwurst on the grill? And I burned a couple, and he was like, eat them. <laughs> he said, I'll eat them. Oh, there we go. It's starting to brown. Look at that. Oh, can y'all see there? It's starting to brown. We'll keep it close and just keep an eye on it. Because the biscuits are completely done. And they'll be nice and flaky and light. Can you see when, when they come out? All right. Gotta keep checking. I get all happy when there's biscuits. Being a diabetic, you don't get to eat a lot of bread and things like that. Y'all know that. All righty. I think these are about ready. Now, uh, honey, we have a spoon. That's what I tried to think of everything that I could have to put together, make sure I didn't screw anything up. Um, and I forgot spoons. I taste as I go, you know, just a little taste here and there. I use a clean spoon every time, though. There are people I know that don't, and I don't need to throw houses. All right. So I'm going to make sure. I just need a touch of the root because it's it's boiling hot. Y'all. Oh, so good. Honey, you want to bite? You can use my spoon. <laughs> no, go get your others because I'd have to put it back in there. And I just said, don't use a dirty spoon. I don't want to say one thing to another. Oh, these are pretty. Look at my biscuits. Now look, they're getting so pretty. Look, honey. Woohoo! All right, let's get these suckers out of here. I don't want that to come up and burn my arm. Oh, there we go. Close, turn it off. And yes, I'm one of those people that has left an oven on all night before. There's my biscuits. What y'all think? Looks pretty good, right? They're gonna be good. I guarantee it. Oh, like I said, um, it took a summer. Now I'm not gonna waste this butter because once again, no need to. This is delicious. A little butter with salt in it will be just fine. It won't hurt a thing. Oh, so pretty. Here, baby. Will you hand me the um? Bowl to put the onions and mushroom in. I think I've got my clear bowl. I think it's right there. <laughs> it's around there and I can't reach it. What's going on? And make my plate. Hey, Mandy, you just come on. You're you're just a state of what? A state and a half away? Okay, now as I'm lifting these out, you'll see. Look how pretty. Did you get you a spoon so you could I could give you a taste, buddy? And see, I'm just gonna put them all in this. And that stay good and warm because I'm going to cook my ribeyes. And you'll see how I do it, and it's real easy. And then if I need to reheat these, like if they're, ooh, about lost one. If they're not quite uh, warm enough, if I don't think they're warm enough with it, I can always go back and pan because the pan is going to be, ah, I did lose one. It escaped. Oh, well. You will live another day. 
I'm just pulling all that out. Look at that. Now I'm making asparagus after. I'll show you how to do that too. So easy, so fast. I hate overcooked asparagus. My asparagus should be cooked. Let's do a farm. You want it all, like an al dente pasta. Good old, just right to bite. Okay, so I'm gonna set that back there. Oh, look how pretty. Make sure I haven't left too many mushrooms. So I see I'm gonna sit down. I have so much fun doing this. All right. You know what I think I'm going to do? Yeah, let me go ahead and do the steaks first. How hot is that pan? I'm going to give you this, baby. And he's going to just reach over and get it. Just Nobody's going to see your arm. He's like, I don't like to be on camera. He doesn't like to picture taking. He doesn't like to be on camera. I'm like, you know how annoying that is at weddings and events? Get it and just sit it on the table over there. All right. This is starting to cook down. I'm gonna turn the heat up. You gotta turn the heat up. Don't be afraid to cook. You got it, baby? Sweetheart, hey. <laughs> grab this, sweetie. He's getting as bad as I am. He's freaking what he's doing. Just grab the biscuits, sweetheart. Thank you. Don't drop them. All right. You cannot cook a good steak, even with a roux or marinade, unless you've got the heat up. These are bacon wraps. You do not want undercooked bacon. Now, I'm going to take these. I am, let's see if I can manage to do this right. I don't have my tongs. I don't know where they are. They're in one of my drawers. And do you see what I'm doing with the bacon? The bacon is all the way around it, so I am cooking it on its side. That way, the bacon cooks first. When I learned how to do that, I was like, because I kept wondering, you know, when you go out to eat and you order this, the bacon's always nice and, you know, got a good crisp to it, got a good flavor. And then when I cook it at home, I'm like, the bacon's not doing it. And then I was like, well, shit, let's turn it on its side and start out. That made the biggest difference in the world, and it changes the flavor. And also, you get the bacon fat coming out first, and it actually soaks into the meat and gives it that flavor. So if you've got, you know, a pepper bacon like this, it's just going to make it all that much better. Now I'm going to change up spoons again because I'm going to start just drizzling this over these beautiful babies. Oh. Tell me that don't look good. You have to be crazy not to want this. Woo! So tasty. Oh, wait, I forgot to give you a taste. Give me your spoon. And you just leave it on the side. And I'm going to show you what they look like, how you know when to turn. Honey, do you want your spoon? Okay, here. Because what's the fun of cooking if you can't taste test or lick the bowl? There you go, baby. There's never a cake that I make <laughs> that we don't put it all out and then we lick the bowl. You know, cookies, same way. I'd rather eat cookie dough. A lot of times then uh wait a minute, shoot, I'm dropping everything. I'd rather eat cookie dough than I would the cookies. Rosie, what night are you making chocolate chip cookies, doll baby? Oh, what's going on in the chat? Oh, this this is absolutely it's delicious. You will once you have this, you won't want to have a steak <laughs> without this kind of marinade. And I don't usually keep whiskey in the house, you know. Well, I don't drink it. Well, he does when he wants, but um, it's it's nice to have the cook to make this and the soy sauce. Okay, now look. I'm going to use both of these so I don't drop it. I'm terrified of dropping one of these in the floor. All right, look. See how that bacon looks? That bacon's cooked right there. All right, now I'm going to kind of roll it to where it's on the part that the bacon has not been completely cooked so you just you just gotta love on them all right now this is getting this is getting a little too thick so what do you think i'm gonna do i'm gonna grab a bottle <laughs> with this being whiskey the alcohol woo, the alcohol burns out fast so when you've got it heated like this 
It's just going to intensify the flavor, and honest to goodness, it's delicious. Now, oh, keep rolling these just a little at a time. Now, as I said, I like my steak rare, but if it's got bacon on it, you know, the sides are going to cook a little more. But my middle is still cool. And if I had a cast iron, if I could have a cast iron skillet, <laughs> we have gone round and round. Um, I have put the cast iron skillet in the stove and heated it to 400 and plopped steaks in there that weren't wrapped like these. It's perfect. I need salt and pepper. That's, I, that's the way I feel. But these, because of this, because I like it this way, we're going to make and have fun. You know, they always say, don't play with your food. I play with food all the time. <laughs> I can't eat it as much as I used to, but I sure can enjoy making it. And I felt so bad that I haven't been able to. I need to help here. I, I felt so bad that I haven't been able to cook the way I like. And my poor husband is getting neglected. Okay, you see that? If the roux starts to separate a little bit, oh, Marinay, I say roux. I lived in Louisiana for a while when I married my first husband. He was in the Air Force and uh, we were down there. He was stationed down there at Barksdale. And um, I was taught, a lot, they taught me, uh, the friends that I made down there taught me how to make catfish. And I love it. But I got used to saying really wants to marinade. But six of one, half dozen of the other. It's all the same, right? What's going on in the chat? Some would say that's a waste of whiskey. You know what? There's plenty left in that bottle when somebody wants a good drink. And right, you could I, I could go for, you know, bourbon and that coke. But I can't. I will suffer. And besides, I can always buy more whiskey, right? I want it. Now, this is starting to get good and cooked. Um. If you take your knife or your fork or whatever and you start pressing down on the middle, you'll see it's soft. That middle, the middle of the steak would be extremely cool. All right. If you like really rare like I do, I could eat that right now. The bacon is cooked all the way around. You feel it with your knife or fork or spoon or whatever. And this one is too. Let me flip that buddy over. But you see, it's very, very tender. And as you cook steaks, you will learn. The difference between just a good tender steak that's not overcooked and isn't tough and when it feels like it's too rare or when you're hitting medium rare. And if all else fails, cut the damn thing in the middle just like that and peek. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to change your cook time. Oh, God, that smells so good. And then we're going to have asparagus with this. I think this one's going to end up being mine. It's not quite as cooked, so I can't get a hold of it. I needed to find my tongs, and I couldn't find them. All right, you see how the outside? Oh, and look at the difference when I touch with my knife. I don't know if you can see real well at the lighting in here. I'm sorry, my lighting's not great for them. But see how different it is? Do you feel that when you push on it, that it's starting to get a little firmer, but it's still tender. Like, seriously, you really don't need a knife. This one, let me just say on set. This one, when I press it, the same thing, really tender. But this one had already been down. So I'm gonna flip this one. Oh, that's pretty. It's getting a crisp on it. Now, as I say, this is starting to. Oh, that was an awful sound. That sounded like nails on the top board, didn't it? This is starting to cook down. That's okay once you're getting your steak cooked. Because you're going to want to have a nice little coating. You, you want it to be kind of crisp on the outside. Not burnt, but crisp. You're getting anxious. He's like rocking back and forth. He's like, give me food. <laughs> God love you, honey. I'm never hungry. All right. We're getting there. I'm about ready to take mine off because the bacon's done. And I think this is as done as I want it. I'm going to slide that baby right off. I'm going to set this here. Let it continue cooking. A, a steak keeps cooking after you take it out of the skillet. I'm looking to make sure the bacon on this one's done. Make sure I turn it all out. 
And the little pin that's holding the bacon on has not popped out. That means it's not a well done center. So you'll see if I if I was gonna cook this long enough, which I would not run the steak by doing that, uh, it would just go pop pop right out. Kind of like turkey when you're back, when you're cooking for Thanksgiving and you got a butter ball and stuff to thing in it, which I never use because I cook my turkey upside down. I don't know if any of y'all do that. I'll have to show you at Thanksgiving. I cook my turkey differently. And uh, and I love deep fried turkey too. But I don't do that. I'm not setting anything on fire. I think everybody that tries deep fried turkey sets everything on fire. Brian says it's just right for him. Now fix yours. I, I will show you Brian. Brian is, he is pounding in the floor over here. He's got his head down and he's just like, like that. He pounds. It's so cute. I had to fuss with him yesterday. He was mad at me for two hours. He wouldn't even come over and sit with me. That dog has more personality than most people I know. All right. Baby, what do you think? Let me cut. I'm going to cut the center of this just to make sure. And I'm peeking. Now, it's still a little rare for him. So, I'm going to press on it just a little bit. I don't want to. I don't want to match the juice out. Remember, we're adding. Adding to it. Oh. Getting pretty though. But if you look, let's see if I can get this around. If you look, you can see this the little thing's starting to start to go and it will pop. It's a heat sensor. What's going on while this is doing? You're over here eating tater tots and this bitch is having a fillet. I love you, doll baby. <laughs> I'll make you a fillet if you want one. <laughs> I love tater tots. You'll t oh, well, God love your heart. Night no night about cares. Thank you. I never get super chats. I never think to even mention them. But everything that comes in, the absence and all that, goes to our animal rescue. And because uh, all our dogs are rescues, adopt don't stop. And uh, yeah. Okay. Oh my lord, that's looking so pretty, baby. <laughs> Look at that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, now let me cut it. I'm gonna leave it in there for a little, a little while. It's on that side. But, oh Lord, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Now that, when you cut it, I'm gonna show you. Don't get mad. I'm cutting your steak. If you can, you. I don't know if you can see the color, but it's pink in the middle. So it's a warm. It's not quite a warm center, but it's perfect, and it's like got a nice little crust on the outside, like mine does. And then. Let's see. This side, this side needs a little bit more for him. I've been cooking him steak a long time. Okay. Just a couple minutes. I love tater tots. I love each other. I'll take my plate now, please. Glad you're feeling better. We have a lot in common. You ready? Is that good? You want me not? Okay. Now let me turn the temperature down. I'm going to show you what we do. I'm going to put his. And we can always tell the difference. See, his has, look at that. How pretty is that? It's not burnt. That's from this. And it just, oh, it smells so good. All right, I'm gonna put it on top. So it can sit there. Now, all of this in here, that's just goodness. So what I'm gonna do, it is not burnt. There is some liquid. It's gonna go right in there. With the onions and the flesh. Oh, here that sizzle. Woo! All right. I'm going to put this in the sink. You're going to hear it go. Give me just a minute. Here we go. Woo! That's going to be fun to scrub. <laughs> this does not make it easy to do the dishes. All right. I'm going to take... A half a stick of butter. That's all we got left. The asparagus. Baby, will you hand me the cup? I'm gonna take this. Put it in here. Now I've got that cooled down because I had it turned off. And I'm gonna put. Start rolling that baby around. I'm gonna put. You can use olive oil too. I, I bake it sometimes if I'm using the oven a lot, but I've turned the oven off. Um, you can bake it. I use olive oil, a little garlic, and I just put it in a pan, and as the butter melts, it'll be nice. 
throw that around in there. Clean the stuff out. So, but you can't use olive oil. Use garlic and salt. That's all asparagus needs. Do not screw up your asparagus by putting a bunch of fattening shit on it. That makes me crazy. That people. I love hollandaise sauce. I will eat hollandaise sauce on about anything. I'd put it on a cracker. But asparagus is so healthy for you. Why? Why do it? You know. Plus, I'm fat. And I'm trying to lose weight. Um, <laughs> get your asparagus whenever you buy it. First thing you should do, cut the ends off of it. Put it in a cup of water. Remember, this is a living being. Living thing, I guess not being. Plants being? Do they count as beings? I don't know. Anyway, put it in here and your asparagus will stay nice and crisp. You can look at that. Ooh, okay, I'm going to leave that in there. Get this nice and melted. Oh, it's going to be pretty. Butter. <laughs> All the team doesn't have shit on me when it comes to butter. All right. As the butter's melting, start laying that in there. Just a tad, because my butter's melting a little slower than I'm used to. Like I said, this cooktop is not, I want my new one. Put it in here, here, here. <laughs> we can't get the counter guy to come out. He's so busy. All right. I'm using my smaller skillet. So of course, you don't want to have it laying on top of each other you know you want to spread it out make happy little asparagus i sound like i'm cooking with bob ross happy little asparagus in the skillet with the butter <laughs> all right that should be good for right now i'll cook the rest of it we never have leftover asparagus ever 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 <laughs> my husband will eat it cold but um anyway so i'm going I'm going to do that number, and the asparagus will roll. You see it kind of rolling? Get that butter all over it. Just enough to give it a little shine. That's all you need. Now, I am not, I don't have to watch my salt intake. In fact, I'm always, if you're diabetic and you have to drink fluids, like, I'm brittle, brittle, brittle. Like, pain can hit me and my sugar will go really high. So, I drink a lot of you know, healthy stuff like, you know, flavored waters, water, whatever. I drink Gatorade like crazy because I have to replace my electrolytes. And I will lose too much salt. So salt isn't a problem for me. However, this apron's bunching up. However, if you do have a problem with sodium, you know what? You can use a salt substitute or you can skip it. Because asparagus, I love the flavor of it. All right, here we go. Look at that. Just a little bit. Just enough to make it happy. And all the salt is to do is to bring out the flavor. Okay, I wanted to mention something. I'm all about trivia factoids. If you're playing a trivia game and this ever comes up, you'll know, you'll know the answer. Remember back when they were saying that MSG was so bad for you that people were allergic to MSG? Do you know why they did that? Because MSG, uh, there was one man who reported to um, the CDC that he had had uh, food at a Chinese restaurant and they used MSG and he was severely allergic to it. Turned out he had food poisoning. They didn't check his story very well. Um, just keep rolling this as you go. But anyway, it was widely reported. People were going crazy saying, oh, no MSG in this, no MSG in that. Um, Nobody's ever proven to be that. It actually, the Chinese say that it's another type of, you know, you have salty, sweet, all that. This is called tastiness. The MSG will bring out. So I just think that's a really cool story that one guy ended up changing the way we do. However, look up what foods have the MSG in them. I think every fast food restaurant just about uses it. And they just don't say anything about it. And nobody thinks anything about it because, you know, it's only the Chinese restaurants that use it, right? Nope. All right. This is starting to look good. It's not quite bendy. I want them just a little bendy. I do not want my asparagus to be limp. If you pick up a piece of asparagus and it goes, it's overdone. You don't want to eat it. It's had the good shit. <laughs> All right. These are my babies. We're going good. All right. While that's, go while that's going on, see, y'all learned, learned something that you can actually use in a bar. <laughs> but 
But let's see. I need to button some. I get notifications and it's like they line up. I'm, this new Mac, I'm not, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have time. But um, all my notifications come down and then it blocks my stuff. Oh, let's see. I, I hope everybody's okay uh, that was, that's was that been in North Carolina, South Carolina, everywhere that it's flooded. Um, I know Kentucky is getting it real bad right now. If it, Like I said, if it rains anymore, we're all going to turn into ducks or grow gills one or another. It, I have I have been through several hurricanes. I remember Hurricane Fran. I had to change a tire in a hurricane. I, you know, so I've been through several, but I wasn't on the coast when it happened. Thank God. You know, but the, the scariest thing I've ever witnessed was there were tornadoes. There were five at one time and I was coming up Route 77 and Madeline was in the car with me in the front seat. She was old enough to where she didn't have to be in the car seat back then. You know, I think it was till age four or certain height. And uh, she was like, look, mom, Wizard of Oz. And I'm like, yeah, that's a tornado. How cool is that? And I am doing a hundred easy trying to get to hit fancy gap because I kept thinking if I can get up fancy gap, we're safer, you know. And she was like, and there's one, and there's a funnel clouds. Just it scared me. Yeah, I mean, I'll just think that was. Oh my god, I'm in a car with my baby, and and we're it's just going to be awful. We're going to get killed. And why did I set out? And you know, because when you're a mother, you blame yourself or your parent, mother, or father, and things happen that you don't, you really can't control. You still blame yourself. I, I was. I was like, I'm so stupid. Why didn't I, you know, it, it stay south? Why did I come up this way? Because she had to go to visitation with her father. So, you know, every day and weekend. But, okay. Let me show you that. I'm going to go here. All right, look. See how it's wiggly? See how pretty that is? That's done. Okay. Can we have a flip? Or you know what? I'm just going to turn this off. I don't like them to sit in butter. <laughs> I love butter. Y'all gonna make fun of me for butter. Um, I don't like them to sit in it. Plus, I want to cook the rest of the asparagus real quick because it really doesn't take that long. I don't know what I eat. Oh, see, it's just right, just a little bendy. I know what you're gonna do. You're gonna be grabbing asparagus. <laughs> There we go. See, and the tops are just slightly bending. It's just cooked, but it's got a beautiful green color to it. And I'm just going to set that on that. It'll be fine. Okay, I'm going to put the rest of this asparagus in here. Ooh. Oh, wait, I guess I better turn my eye back on. I turned it down. You know, I was scared to death to do this, but I actually feel more comfortable doing this than just sitting on a live stream because I've got something to do with my hands. And I guess I'm not thinking about anything else. And then I'm watching this side chat. And I want to say thank you to everybody who's here and thank you to all my moms. See, look, I've got two little skillets. It's perfect. Now I'm going to do like I did before, get the butter coating. Take a little bit of garlic powder. I don't know if I better pop it off. I'll be pouring that powder all over it. That'll run it. It'll be burnt. <laughs> Just a little bit. Now the butter has salt in it, you know, from when I did it the last time, but the asparagus is going to need just a touch. So just very little when you're doing the second round. You could load, you could coat these things with garlic, and I'd still eat them. I love, I love garlic. I cook a lot of things with garlic. Because it's healthy for you. All right. Roll that baby around. Get them all settled. Honey, you want to get our plates? Thank you. I love it, man. Okay, let's see what's going on. Oh, we had a troll. Bye, troll. And there's another one. Bye. They really do. Then you grow up. Oh, hi, Jenny. So good to see you. I, Jenny, Jenny comes in church chat all the time. I just love her death. <laughs> you can tell we're doing country folks because our plates are, are two, different, two different sets. I've got so many mismatched and this and that. And I don't bring out the good stuff for just us. You know? I'm not going to get my china out. I'm 
that good. Got what, two sets? Three. And then everybody had, you know, everybody got married and they had a china pattern that they chose. And that was the big thing for so many years. And when I got married, my mother said, do not do that. Do you realize that both of your grandparents collect antique china and have complete sets? So I never had to. And then just from through the years, you know, picking up casual plates, I've got about all sorts of but you know what it makes it makes the meal interesting and makes you think about when you got it but let's see mm. oh god parmesan cheese oh i what is it the parmesan encrusted chicken that you like really well Not you oh and it is so good and i'll have to share the recipe for that sometime but yeah you can put parmesan cheese uh, grated over or if you even if you haven't like we remember when we were younger growing up and there was this big thing of the grated parmesan cheese and every time you had spaghetti you had to just load it on but actually that works really well if you want to do it you can also you can take uh the um shit what is it i get all the time for japanese restaurant and i can't think tempura you can make Tim, like if you're making chicken tempura or anything else, you can. I, I love asparagus that is coated and fried the same way. Also, that's the only one I like sweet potatoes because I don't. I never like sweet potatoes growing up, but I really like them. I like sweet potatoes tempura. Jenny, I have missed you so much. You're such a doll, baby. I really appreciate you coming in. I just love seeing everybody that's so kind and loving. And hey, Beth Rush, how are you, sweetie? Yeah, you remember a can of, a can of the shaky cheese? They'd be like, get the shaky cheese. Get it, go get the can. And we didn't take anything of it. And you know, it wasn't until I think I was, I think I was in Belgium that I realized that you could actually grate cheese that they have to stick the parmesan, they grate it, and they do it at all sorts of restaurants now. But yeah, we just had a can. And Pizza Hut always had it on the table, remember? They had salt, pepper, and those chili flakes. What was that, cayenne? And uh, no, it wasn't cayenne. It was red, just red pepper flakes. And they always had Parmesan cheese, and it was always almost empty because everybody used the whole thing. Ooh, because it wasn't cheap, you know, to buy. Okay, this is almost done. Okay. Let me get yours out. Is this one yours or is this one yours? Or I can't tell this one. This one? That one? This one? <laughs> I'm telling you, he does not like me on camera. All right. This is still hot. This is his steak. And then let me get this. I'm going to burn myself. Let me get the. Oh, that's hot. Yeah, this is warm. And now I'm going to just place. The onions and the mushrooms. We're shrimping it, and I want, I'm using. I'm not using a slotted spoon on this because I want it to have a little of the marinade or root or whatever you want to call it on it. Okay, so that's pretty. Can set that down. I'm we'll gonna have to wipe everything down. I've got to get away. All right. Okay, that's about done. Not quite. I'll go ahead and give you a stir here. I'm going to put this asparagus on his plate. I'll be eating asparagus. We're all going to have stinky feet. Would you have Brian? Brian's getting excited. I apologize. Plus the dog outside. They communicate. So, there you go. Now, baby, you'll put a biscuit on your plate. I can show the folks what we made. <laughs> Are they good and flaky? Looks like they turned out good. Yay. All right. As you can see, the biscuit, the top, has nice and it's it's buttery, but just tap it a little bit. The underside, look how pretty that is. Perfect. That's exactly the way you want your biscuit. I'm going to break it open. He does not put butter on his biscuit, but you see how it's, it is a lot like a scone, but it's, it's a little different. It's not as smooth. It's a little rougher. Okay. Um. Let me cut your, can I cut your steak open to chef? I'm going to turn this off. Hang on just a second. These are done. I don't know if they were done. 
Ta da! It's turned off. Let's get my phone out of the way so I don't burn Siri. <laughs> Switch. All right. I'm going to move that over just enough. And when he puts into his steak, you know, a little tab. Oh, that's soft. I think this one's maybe mine. That's fine. I don't have a fork. Will you hand me a fork? <laughs> I don't have a fork. You still buy the shaky cheese for your husband? I think that is so cute. Yeah, I, I didn't realize that you could actually buy blocks. See how all oh, that's tender. Look at that. That knife. It's going just through it. Yeah, this one's mine, baby. Maybe. No, the yours. Look how pretty that is. It's literally just, oh, and it's going to have such a good flavor around it between the bacon and the roux. There you go. That's dinner. See how it's got just a little pink? It's not bloody. It's not wrong. Mine will be because I like it. But that's dinner for the night. You want to taste it and see how it is? There you go. You can use this fork. You can keep this one. We're not that fancy. And you know what? Six ounces is about perfect. They say you want to eat protein with your meal that's about the size of the palm of your hand. And those six ounce fillets are just perfect. And they're not that expensive. How much were those? Each. They're like, what, six bucks? Four bucks. Four bucks for a fillet. Honey, you could have give up the tater tots and had a fillet. Literally, four bucks a pop for the steak. You, say it out loud. He's chewing. He's got a big old mouthful. Say it out loud. How is it? Honestly. It's awesome. It's really good. <laughs> And it's got, it's, you're going to get the flavor of the bourbon, the smokiness on it. And then the soy goes together well. And remember, it's garlic and salt. And you can add some pepper. It's pepper cheese. If it starts to, you know, you want to cook it at a good temperature so you get that bacon cooked. And if your roux starts to cook down, I ain't going to waste it. It ain't going to hurt nobody. The alcohol's going to burn off anyway. You could feed it to kids. They, are, they're, they wouldn't calm down or go slow. Too bad, right? But let's see who else is in here. Is it mutton? No, it's uh, Kyle. It's beef. It's a filet mignon that's wrapped in bacon. So <laughs> he won't quit chewing to speak. But the biscuits turned out well. They turned out the way I wanted. And you all saw with those how it looks. I mean, literally, it's it holds together. It's not too wet, but it's damp enough to hold together. Don't be afraid to go off the recipe if like, you know, I, I've used like three fourths of a cup of buttermilk and it worked out perfect. And sometimes the world just turns upside down and I gotta use a little bit more. Go make your feel, test it out, play with it. Well, it's fun to play with your food. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. Jimmy the Gator Man. Did you turn the oven clock off? It's been blinking for a while. Our power keeps going on and off. It went off today. We've been having we've been having storms, and <laughs> here I was getting ready to make cobbler for the video, and it'll come out tomorrow. It'll, it'll go up tomorrow. Um, and I'm like, I called him and I said, "Our power's out. <laughs> I'm getting ready to cook." If this had been in there in the oven while the power gone out, I literally would have just probably sat in the floor and cried because uh, I was so proud of doing it, and I was nervous. <laughs> what, honey? It's like it's awesome. <laughs> so cute. Uh, you see why I like to cook? If you've got somebody that appreciates it, then it makes it it makes you happy. And this is a healthy meal. I also wanted to say, um, you're not gonna do it drunk. It does have butter, you know, but like I say, it's a good fat and it's one that's easy to run off. And uh, you know, I'd much rather use butter than use something that's not natural. Like I say, if you don't believe me, set some margin outside, nothing will touch it. Uh, the caramelized onions, they are carb. The mushrooms are not. The roux doesn't have any sugar in it. And it does have soy sauce. This has sodium in it. Um, the biscuits, hey, they're a carb. <laughs> you might as well call it dessert. If you haven't made dessert and you make this, crack open one of those biscuits and put some jelly in it. You know, jelly or jam, uh, some, you know, marmalade. It's... 
anything you want. Biscuits, they're good for everything. He will have those biscuits eaten <laughs> tonight. He loves them. And that makes me really happy. It really does. When people eat my food, it makes me happy. And um, tater tots are awesome. I like tater tots with, uh, and you used to could buy, you used to could, <laughs> but remember the pizzas that we got at school? It was just like flatbread and sauce and then mozzarella cheese, but it was like the best pizza. And you get that in tater tots. They were trying to carb us to death. Remember carb lighting? You used to do that before track practice and volleyball. Oh, yeah, I eat a bunch of sugar and carbs. <laughs> didn't work. Uh, they didn't They didn't do the, th um, the protein. We didn't monitor that. So let's see. Yeah, he speaks. <laughs> Steph said, oh, my God, he speaks. <laughs> Y'all probably think that I'm making up a husband because you don't see him on here. But... Uh, this is my plate. I'm going to fix it. But um, tune in tomorrow for some peach cobbler. I'll be serving it warm with ice cream. And I hope you all write down that. If you have any questions about anything I fix, y'all know how to get in touch with me. It's Mama Beth's World 1, number 1, on Twitter. And it's Mama Beth's World at gmail.com. Rosie, thank you for giving me the, the courage to do this live. I was scared to death, honest to goodness, I was. Um, am I going to eat? Yes, I'm going to eat in just a minute. I cannot, because of the surgery I had, I'll take about three or four bites. I have to take fenugrim before I eat so I can even keep it down. But I get three or four bites, and then in about three hours, I'll get a few more bites. And, you know, when you've, when you've had gastric surgery, I had the sleeve done, and I, you just have to eat a little bit. And you have to watch, you know, what you eat. I, I'm diabetic, so I can't eat a lot of carbs. So I'll get, you know, maybe a bite of biscuit and then a little bite later, <laughs> and I'll have to watch. But you gotta be careful with all of it. Angie said biscuits are good for oh honey, aren't they though? It, <laughs> my DD, when I was when I would be pouting or upset, she'd hand me a biscuit with jelly on it, a glass of milk. My husband only home three. Oh God, love your heart. Only three days a month. My son is married and in the Marines, and my daughter is in college, so it's pretty much just me. So no fun cooking anymore. You know what? I I understand. No night, but I understand how that feels because uh, we were dating when my daughter was in high school. She was a sophomore. I think she just started her sophomore year. No. Was it sophomore year? I think. Yeah, it was It was the end of her sophomore year. And we left to go to college, you know, because we didn't live together. I mean, he would come on the weekends and visit, and, you know. But... With her gone, I didn't have anybody to cook for. I didn't have, I, I would I would holler for her and I would forget that she was gone. And I know exactly how you feel. It feels to go through that. And with your husband gone, it's, oh my God. Because I could talk to him on the phone, but he wasn't there. It wasn't like I could cook meals for him. So I feel that pain. God love your heart. I ended up making care packages <laughs> for my daughter and sending them just so I could, you know, I make pumpkin bread and things like that and different stuff and freeze it or can it. And she'd get, she'd get boxes of goodies and school, you know, and she went to an out-of-state school. And, you know, so it just, it was, I cried a lot. And then I got a wiener dog and it's, it's been wieners ever since. But God love your heart. Invite, invite the neighbors over, you know, another enjoyable street. Thank you, Beth. I appreciate it. And uh, good night, Steve. Thank you so much for everything. We've got to, Steve lives in the same state as we do. He's just you know, a couple hours up the road. We've got to meet in the middle and have coffee. And, you know, when when we hit Charleston, that'll be, that'll be good middle ground. And we'll get together and have some coffee and eat something good. It won't be what I cook, but, you know, um, night, but I'm so glad that you, you've joined. Yeah, you know, this is actually a good recipe for anyone who's diabetic because it's got fats but not so much sugar except for the biscuits <laughs> but you can always you can always watch how much you know bread whether you make biscuits or you eat bread you can watch how much uh you take but you know this is a good protein asparagus you can literally eat as much asparagus as you want and your sugar won't go up now the caramelized onions or something else you need to go a little slow on those mushrooms you can eat all day long but uh 
you know, there are, but there are lots of really good diabetic meals that I fix that you wouldn't know are <laughs> good, good for you. They taste good. Oh, let's see. Oh gosh, Denise Lynn. I'm so sorry. I didn't, I had no idea. I, I, I didn't. I am so sorry. Oh, my heart goes out to you. It really does. And Angie, you know, we need to get together and I'll cook. We can like go to different houses, go to wherever's close or, you know, live stream. And, uh, you know, it's hard to cook for one person. It really is. Sometimes it's hard to cook for two. That's why I'll make, <laughs> I usually end up making way too much. And if I do, then I, it's in the freezer. We'll eat it the next day. You know, we do leftovers a lot because it saves money. But, yeah, um, the asparagus makes a sticky pee. But, you know what, it's so good for you. And we don't care. We don't care if we got no bathrooms in this house. So, you know, I have my bathroom. He has his, and we still have an extra. So it doesn't matter. But um, let's see. I am so glad you all joined. Oh, Denise, his birthday is today. God love you, your heart, and happy birthday to him in heaven. I just, oh, that breaks my heart. My second husband passed away. I, I always say I, I divorced one, one passed, and then I found Mr. Wright. He's still pretty, and he's still, he's still eating his heart as he can go. God love him. I love a man that eats. So um, I've been at this almost an hour and a half. That video I made today, I talk a lot. <laughs> I really do. But I made the cobbler, and I go into detail on how everything has to be done. And um, it turned out pretty good. So, but it's it's a longer video than it. You know, they say you should make it about 20 minutes. Well, it's about, it's not quite double, I don't think. But it's there. But it's fun. So, you know. Oh, you had your grandbaby say, I'm jealous of that. I'm not even going to lie. Um, I keep telling my daughter, you know, you could give me a grandbaby. And she's like, Mom, I need a husband. I need to. You know, I'm having fun and doing things that I want and traveling. And she is. She's got a wonderful life. I keep going, give me a grandbaby. She said, just make do with the wieners. Brian's enough. And um, he's bugging me to say hello. He's going between me and his daddy over there because he thinks he's going to get a bite. My dogs love asparagus, too. And I had no idea how good it was for dogs. But, yeah, they like it. But we try. But this has sodium in it, so we try not to give them leftovers that have sodium. And nothing processed, you know. But Denise, take take great pleasure in those grandbabies, you know. And I am so sorry. I know you're heartbroken, but you know. But you're always welcome to come here and talk. That's for sure. And uh, let's see, going to eat bed. <laughs> I'm going to. And um, Nightbot, you don't have any grandbabies either. Well, we need to <laughs> we need to start talking to our kids. Um, Get them, get them going. All right. I'm going to say good night to everybody, and I'm going to go eat, eat my dinner. Oh, Lord, he's about clean his plate. <laughs> I guess it turned out good. <laughs> but thank you all. Thank you. Thank you for being so sweet and for making this such a good, good stream. I'm really happy, and I look forward to doing this some more. If you all want to watch me do something, um, cook-wise, that is, <laughs> if you want me to make something, you know, uh, just let me know. And I do have other videos I've made. I had to explain what grits was. I made cheese grits. And <laughs> then what else have I made? It's just different stuff. And uh, my deviled eggs are the best deviled eggs you will eat. Seriously, I put, I'll put my deviled eggs up against anybody. And I made a video about it. And uh, go, you can go make those if you want. But I want to end saying thank you again. And as always, I love you. And you love you. And I'm going to go eat. <laughs> All right. I will talk to you later. Bye.